All right, everybody, I just got a new cell phone, so I am actually excited to uh, uh, show my collection of old cell phones. Everyone's always like, oh, do you trade in your old phones? Do you donate them? Do you throw them away? Do you lose them? Um, I actually keep really good care of my cell phones, surprisingly, and I also collect them. I don't trade them in. I don't donate them. I don't give them away. But we're going way back with my first cell phone, which I got on my... I guess 18th birthday um, and it was a private line uh, phone that was hardwired into my house and all you could do was dial the phone numbers um, this phone number back then was 623-6385 right in there this was fancy because even back then I would select no ringtone because I don't like to talk on the phone so actually I could make calls but it's not likely that I ever got calls on this um, you could have a low or loud selection for your ringer. Next comes the age of wireless, no longer plugged into the wall. This was my first cordless phone when I had my little apartment back in 1988, I guess it was. On the back were some phone numbers that I would keep uh, handy. It would have been like mom and dad, my aunt Sue and Uncle Jack, uh, maybe my work, um, and that's about it. But again, all I could do was just dial numbers. Then I got into the age of cell phones and I did not keep my first one, unfortunately. I wish I had, um, but all you could do was just dial numbers. Then I upgraded to the next one. This was through Sprint, uh, Qualcomm, and this one had email capability in addition to being able to dial phone numbers, but it has a little antenna and it had a really fancy for its time um, wheel that you could spin right here and you could go through your screens and then when you got to the screen you want you just press it it would click and you could check your email and dial but this was pretty big you should have seen this on my hip uh, this was the like the phones when I was wearing it on my hip then in order to get cell phones smaller they went to clamshell phones and that's this one uh, for reception they still had the antenna mm. um, but pretty small. Uh, this one you could also check your email with too, and uh, you could actually get onto the web with this one, but it was just a green screen with black uh, pixelated font uh, to go to anybody's web page. You could not actually see the web pages they had it normally presented. After this clamshell, I went to this one, a little more stylish, futuristic looking, and you'll notice a front facing screen and camera whereas this one did not have a camera so this was my first picture taking phone which was pretty cool <laughs> the pictures were really low quality um, also they got rid of the uh, pull out antenna right there but another small one then I got into Verizon because they had more of uh, I could do work with and do emails I was on emails a lot so I got this guy, which was one of my favorite phones. It had an awesome game on there called Bubble Buster. Um, it comes with a stylus so that you could poke it. And what I really liked about this, um, well, this is funny, the camera, you could manually shift the lens to macro or micro, uh, taking pictures of small things or far, far away just by flipping that. Um, and the pixels on that is pretty small. I'm gonna pull out my glasses here. 1.3 megapixel camera but what was cool about this one was check this out oh, look at that keyboard right there so i would type emails and there was no thumbs on a screen and touching the wrong button these buttons were huge and it was easy to hit which one you wanted um this was a fabulous phone had a little toggle right here that floated around in there and you could just kind of like move it around like a joystick uh, to pick things and poke it and move it then that got a little fancier uh, more rounded edges it didn't have the antenna knob up there but the same type of phone where you could type on it and this also had a stylus then i got more into media like mu uh, music videos and listening to songs on my phone so i got this one 
And this one was geared towards entertainment because, well, you had like a front screen to see what was going on. Check this out. Ooh, uh, had speakers and speakers. So you actually had separated volume and sound coming from this one and you can set it down and watch your videos and your listen to music on there. But again, I like this kind of keyboard where you could type on it. Um, and that was a good one. Then probably one of my favorite ones is this little guy right here. It's it's a tiny thing. But it's got a little speed ball right there. So instead of like a joystick, it's actually like a floating marble in there. And you just track it around. And then you could press it. And um, nothing fancy. Just your little camera. But the size of this, it would just fit in my pocket really nicely. And it had a nice rubbery feel to the back. Um, but just, I like small phones. But then I wanted thin, and so I got the Droid Razor. Um, and this one was a funny one because I wanted the special uh, Star Wars Android, uh, or Stormtrooper, the Stormtrooper look to it. So it was the black and white. And so I had to wait for this one to come out. And I got it, I loved it, but me, I have all my little otter boxes and phone protections. When you put this in here, you could not see any white at all so it was kind of pointless that I even got that <laughs> but this was a very stylish phone let's see what the camera was on this one uh, this was my first high-def camera um, from there I was still doing Android and so I got my last Android phone this one was the infamous one that had Gorilla Glass on it that was supposed to be shatterproof and they advertised it as that and of course it shattered and so they gave you a free replacement um it was like a uh class action lawsuit and then it broke again and so then i put a screen protector over the broken glass and so it just looks like crap but um the back had kevlar uh fabric on there uh ballistic kevlar to protect it the back was fine it was just the glass that was breaking um but this was my last Android phone that took fabulous pictures, loved it. And then I decided to go to the way of Apple. And I wanted to go back to having a small phone. So I went to my first iPhone, which is a SE. So it's a uh, an iPhone SE, <clears throat> very old. Uh, to trade it in right now, they said they'd give me like 10 bucks for it. <laughs> so. But I did like uh, switching over to Apple because I have an iMac and I have an iPad and I have iPods. Um, so it made sense to get rid of this. But the downfall of this is the quality of the pictures and the camera was not as good as the uh, droids. <clears throat> and then just the other day, I decided to get another iPhone. And so I went full out and got the iPhone 12 Pro Mac. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Um, anyway, it's the super huge one. Look at the size difference between these guys. And this is the largest phone you can get. It's got LiDAR. I still don't know what LiDAR does. Uh, I joke around about that. Um, but it's maxed out on memory. Uh, 512 gigabytes uh, memory. And so um, this is the one I'm getting used to. It's got a clear case on there. So I've got like a little Scallywag sticker under there. But getting used to holding this versus holding this. So, little one, big one. That's it for my cell phones. Back in the day, I also did have an alphanumeric pager. This pager could get uh, words as well as numer numbers. And this was really cool. This was called a Motorola Talk About Pager. So it was a pager, same size. But what was cool is you could open it up and get your text messages there and you could type out your text messages with your thumbs. So it was almost like a little portable email system. Um, a lot better than a, um, a regular pager. I don't have my very first cell phone and I don't have my very first numeric pager, but otherwise I have a pretty large collection here. Thanks for watching. I know you were thrilled by that.